Take one down, pass it around. Two bottles of beer on the wall. Well, I'm off to bed. Two bottles of beer? Rose, you get all the way to two bottles of beer and you quit? Just drives you nuts, doesn't it, Dorothy? <laughs> Point is, Rose, you do this kind of stupid thing all the time. And if you're not doing something stupid, you're saying something stupid, or wearing something stupid, or cooking something stupid. Rose, what do you think of Blanche saying these things? I think she's a girl karma knocking. <laughs> well, what exactly does that mean? Literally, it's the precise moment when Dog Dude turns white. <laughs> Dorothy, would you like to stay up all night with Blanche and me and watch I Like Lucy? I love Lucy. Well, I haven't seen it yet, so I don't know how I feel about it. Don't mention this to anybody. It's the kind of thing that most people probably wouldn't understand. Oh, don't worry, Dorothy. Rose Nylon can keep a secret. Do you know what the name Nylon means in Norwegian? No. Well, I'm not telling you. There's a meeting at Mensa. That's the organization for people with high IQs like mine. You know, in St. Olaf, we had a chapter of Mensa. And across the room was Girlsa. <laughs> you can't come in here. This house has been quarantined. We all have a... Quick, Rose, give me a deadly disease. Oh, I'm sorry, Blanche. I don't have a deadly disease. Rose, how about that guy you dated last summer? Don't you remember? The one who played uh, Goofy at Disney World? <laughs> I remember the passion, yes. Do you remember why it didn't work out? It just didn't. Right, but why not? I don't want to talk about it. Oh, Rose, honey, there's nothing to be ashamed of. He took off the goofy head. <laughs> I will not have that filthy beast in my house. It belongs in a barnyard. This is not a farm chicken. Count Bessie is a showbiz chicken. Where do you see this? A showbiz chicken. What's she do, play the piano? <laughs> she plays the piano. <laughs> I'm quite fond of you. I'm fond of you, too. Not now. What's her hurry? Didn't you see that enormous thing in her bedroom? I thought she'd stop seeing Roger. <laughs> I have to make sure this watch really is waterproof. <laughs> Honey, why don't you take the watch off your wrist? Come on, Blanche. Then I'd have my hand in a bucket of water for nothing. <laughs> Look what I found. The box of... Rose, where did you get it? Well, I was just under my bed, playing, <laughs> and then there it was. <laughs> Oh, I hate waiting. I hate hospitals. I hate when the people put each other down on love connection. <laughs> Where are you going to shoot this commercial? Well, we discussed many exotic uh, locations, and we settled on right here. Oh, now, hold on here. I don't want a TV crew coming in here, messing up my kitchen, setting up all that video equipment. Well, how about shooting it in your bedroom, Blanche? The equipment's already set up there. <laughs> when you were about 12, and we lived in Brooklyn, they called me into the school to tell me you had the highest IQ in the borough. If that's a coincidence, I was told I had the IQ of a borough. It's my new address and phone number. Oh, come on, Ma, you're joking. <sighs> it's no joke. Ciao. Alfita Zane. Arrivederci and sayonara. <laughs> oh, gee, she could have at least said goodbye. Rose is helping me make out an ironclad will. Wait, you're using Rose as a lawyer? <laughs> what I'm doing? Every Thursday, I watch La Law. <laughs> I never got to go to the prom. You're kidding. Why? Well, I really wanted to go with Delbert Twitchell. He was the most gorgeous boy at our school. And he was captain of the Precision Combine Drill Team. <laughs> well, actually, I was so sure Delbert was going to ask me that I turned down our only foreign exchange student, Cyril Mountbatten. Well, Daddy didn't like Cyril anyway, because he was British. Daddy said the relationship would never work out on account of the language barrier. <laughs> Daddy was a very caring and ignorant man. <laughs> well, finally, it got to the day before the prom, and Delbert still hadn't asked me. So I marched across a crowded cafeteria, stared him straight in the eye, and said, Delbert, what gives? He said, Jenny McCoy, that's why I'm taking her to the prom. <laughs>